This is Ray Bradbury. Join me for the next 30 minutes on a tour through time and space. Come along to the far future. Follow me into a strange past with stories that almost could be or might have been. Real or unreal, this is Bradbury 13. As long as the rockets had spun a silver web across space, Harry Bittering had been able to accept Mars. But now, the web gone, the rockets lying in jigsaw heaps of molten girder and unsnaked wire on Earth. People from Earth left to the strangeness of Mars, the cinnamon dusts and wine airs. This was the moment that Mars had waited for. Now, it would eat them. Ray Bradbury's dark they were and golden-eyed. What was that? Just a bunk. It means we've landed. Landed? We're here? Yes. Get your things together, kids. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Mars. <laughs> Everyone set? All set. All set. We're ready, Harry. Well, ready or not, here we come. Wow. Look at the wind blow. Let's get back on the rocket and go back tonight. Why, Harry? Listen. Listen. It's just wind. We had wind in Boston. It's eaten away the hills and the cities. Look. Chin up, Perry. We've come at least 65 million miles to get here. Let's make the best of it. Ah, oh, you're right. We'll make the best of it. Right, kids? Right. Come on, we've got a house to build. Finally getting used to the wind. Took me a few months, but now I think I'd miss it if it wasn't there. <sighs> Glad you like it. Don't you? Cora, sometimes I feel like a salt crystal in a stream being washed away. We don't belong here. No, for heaven's sakes, Cora, let's buy tickets for home. We can't go back. Well, of course we can. One of these days, the bomb will fix it so there is no more Earth. Then... We'll be safe here. Safe and insane. Come on. I'll fix you a nice earth breakfast. Here you are. Bacon and eggs. Runny yolks. Just the way you like them. Oh, thanks. Hey, have you seen the paper? What's it say? Another 700 from Earth. Colonial days all over again. <laughs> I'll say. Why, in another year, they'll have half a million Earthmen on Mars. Big cities, everything. Good. Maybe you'll like it better. Maybe. Now, the point is that they said we'd fail. Said the Martians would resent our invasion. But did we find any Martians? Not a living soul. Oh, we found their empty cities, but not one living Martian. Oh, there it goes, shaking the house again. Daddy. I don't like it when it blows that hard. I don't know. Maybe there are Martians around here. What? But sometimes at night, I think I can hear them. I hear the wind blowing sand against my window. Like that, here? It's only the wind. When it blows, I get up and see those towns. Way up in the mountains, where the Martians lived. And I think I can see them moving around up there. 
I wonder if those Martians' mind is living here. I wonder if they won't do something to us for coming here. That's nonsense. We're good, decent people. Remember that. You know, all dead cities have some kind of ghosts in them. Memories, I mean. What kind of memories? Well, you see a staircase and you wonder what Martians looked like climbing it. You see Martian paintings and, and you wonder what the painter was like. You make a little ghost in your mind, a memory. You haven't been prowling around those ruins, have you? No, sir. Well, you see that you stay away from them. Pass the jam, Laura. Just the same. I bet something happened. Mother! Father! Laura, what is it? On the radio just now. It's the war! Earth! What? On my radio! Here, let me see that thing. New York is the scene of terrible devastation. The result of a nuclear detonation near the heart of the city. The primary target of the bombs was the New York launching site of the Mars rockets. Reports are skipped. All the space rockets are blown up. There's no more rockets to Mars ever. Oh, Harry. It's all right, Cora. We're stranded on Mars forever? Not forever. The rockets will get through someday. We'll go about our business as if nothing were wrong. We'll keep things going until the war ends. The rockets come back again. Will they really come back? I promise they will. Okay? Now go inside and lay down for a bit. Go on. Cora, why don't you go inside and keep them occupied for a while? What are you going to do? I don't know. Work, I suppose. Work and forget. I'll weed the garden. You know, I always told myself, tomorrow, if I want, I can buy a ticket back to Earth. And somehow, knowing that always helped me accept living here. This is our home now. Forever. Yes. Our hills, our mountains. Those mountains had old, proud Martian names once. But we changed them. Now there's the Ford Hills, Vanderbilt Plateau, Roosevelt Seas, Rockefeller Rivers. <laughs> Somehow it doesn't seem right to change those names. But that's their names now. Oh, on our maps, maybe. The old settlers on Earth knew how to name things, though. They used the old Indian prairie names. Wisconsin, Minnesota, Ohio, Utah, Waukegan. The old names, the old meanings. Yes, they were good names. I wonder if they're up there now. All the dead ones, the Martians. Well, here we are. All alone. Cut off. Come down. Move us out. Take your cities back. We're helpless. I'm going in. Coral, wait. Look at this. What is it? Uh, these blossoms. From the peach tree. Do you see? Well, what about them? Well, don't you see? They're different. They've changed. What? They're not peach blossoms anymore. Well, they look all right to me. They're not. They're wrong. How can you tell? Well, I don't know. An extra petal, a leaf, something. The color's wrong. The smell. And look over here in the garden. Look, right here. Do these look like carrots? Yes. Uh, no. I don't know. They've changed. Maybe. Well, you know they have. They're almost onions, and they're almost carrots and radishes. They smell almost the same. They feel almost the same. But they're different. Coral, what's happening? What is it? Dad! Mom! Come look! Timmy? Over here! The cow! Uh, it was over there, and I saw it. Look at her head. Here. What is it? A bump? Not a bump. A horn, Cora. 
It's growing a third horn. We've got to get away. We'll eat this food and then we'll change. Harry. I can't let it happen. There's only one thing to do. We've got to burn the food. But it's good. It's not poisoned. But it is. Subtly, very subtly. It, we can't touch it. And look at the house. Even that, the wind's done something to it. It just needs a little paint. Oh, don't you see? The air's burned it. And look at the boards. The fog at night's warped them all out of shape. It's not an Earthman's house anymore. Oh, your imagination. No, Cora, not this time. Where are you going? Into town. We've got to do something. I'll be back. Isn't that Harry Bittering coming this way? Sure is. Looks like something ain't sitting right with him. I'll say. Hello, Harry. What brings you to town? What are you going to do? Beg your pardon? You did hear the news this morning, didn't you? Well, sure, we heard it, Harry. Well, what are you going to do about it? Do? What can we do, Harry? Build a rocket, that's what. A rocket? And go back to all that trouble? Not me. You must want to go back. But... Why, Harry? Well, look, you've got gardens. Have you noticed the peach blossoms? The onions? The grass? Well, yeah. Seems I did. Doesn't it scare you? Can't recall that it did, Harry. Oh, you idiots! Oh, Harry. You've got to help me. Help yourselves. If we stay here, we'll all change. It's the air. Don't you smell it? It's something in the air. A, a Martian virus or pollen. Smells like rain to me. <laughs> Listen to me, Sam! Yes, Harry? Will you help me build a rocket? Harry, I got a whole load of metal and some blueprints. Now, you want to work in my metal shop on a rocket? You're welcome. I'll sell you the whole kit and caboodle for 500 bucks. You ought to be able to build a pretty fair rocket by yourself. In about 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> Don't laugh! I'll do it. Sure, Harry. <laughs> Sam. Your eyes. What about them? Didn't they used to be gray? Well, now, I don't remember. They were, weren't they? Why do you ask, Harry? Because now they're kind of yellow colored. Is that so? Harry, what color are your eyes? My eyes? They're blue. Here, take a look in this mirror. See for yourself. Yellow. Turning yellow. Welcome to the club, Harry. Harry! Harry, put down that hammer for a minute. What? You haven't stopped all day. It's supper time. I can't. I'm too busy. But you have to eat here. I brought it out for you. I won't touch it. Why not? I only eat food from our deep freeze. Food that we got from Earth. I won't touch a thing from the garden. Harry, face it, you can't build a rocket. I worked in a shop once when I was in college. I know what I'm doing. Besides, once I get going, the others will help me. Will they? We've got to get away, Cora. We've got to. Plans all over. Harry, it's been weeks now since you've rested. Take the day off. Look, Laura. Rain's done. Some of the men helped me move it. I told you they would. You're not eating. You're getting weaker. Here, I made you a sandwich. I can't eat that. Some of it came from my garden. Harry, I've used up all the food in the deep freeze. There's nothing left. I have to use the food grown on Mars. Now you must eat. How can you finish the rocket if you have no strength? All right. Good. There's some soup in the thermos. Cora, do I look thinner to you? And taller? Well, you've lost some weight, but that's probably from not eating. Some of the boys said I was getting taller, thinner. I, I told them that they were crazy. Please, Harry, take the rest of the day off. The wind's dying down. It's going to be hot. 
The children want to swim in the canals and hike. Wouldn't you enjoy some time with them? But this is a crisis. I can't waste time. Just for an hour? A swim will do you good. Come on. Oh. All right. Just for an hour. Good. The car is all packed. Come on. Before it gets too late. Tim loves the canal. Look at him swim. His skin sure is brown. So is Laura. They're always out playing in the sun. Cora, how long have your eyes been yellow? Yeah, always, I guess. They didn't change from brown in the last three months? No, I don't think so. Why? Uh, never mind. The children's eyes are yellow, too. Sometimes growing children's eyes change color. Maybe we're children, too. At least tomorrow. That's a thought. I think I'll swim. Come on! <laughs> Oh, it does feel good. I wonder what's down at the bottom of these canals. I bet there's pieces of pottery and old statues. Could be. I'll take a look. Be careful. Oh, I will. Be right back. I'm sinking down, down, like an old Martian statue in green silence. It's quiet down here, and peaceful. If I lie here on the bottom long enough, the water will eat away my flesh, till the bones show like coral. Just my skeleton left. And then the water can build on my bones, green things, deep water things, red things, yellow things. After all, isn't that what's up there? There's the Martian sky up there, above the water. It's like a big river, a Martian river. And all of us lying deep in it, in our sunken houses, like hidden crayfish. And the water washing away our bodies, lengthening the bones, and... <gasps> Time for some air. Up, up. Oh, hi, Tim. I've been on the bottom. Uther. What? Uther. You know, Uther's the Martian word for father. Where did you learn that? I don't know. Around. Oh. Uther. Yes? I... Go ahead. I want to change my name. Change it? Yes. What's wrong with Tim for a name? The other day when you called Tim, I didn't even hear it. I said to myself, that's not my name. I've got a new name I want to use. What is the new name? Linnell. Isn't that a good name? Can I use it? Well... Why not? Yes, you can use it, Tim. Yay! I have Linnell! Why did we do that? I don't know. It just seemed like a good idea. Come on, let's get out of the water and take a walk. There's some old Martian villas I'd like to see. All right. Isn't this lovely up here? Yes, it's fine. And look, the old fountains are still running, pumping water. Oh, and look at the villa. There's a good view of the valley, doesn't it? Fantastic. Let's go in. The floor is all made of marble, and so are the walls. Oh, look, there's a swimming pool. Yes. It's all so cool and refreshing. Oh, 
especially when it's so hot outside. It is nice. Harry, if we could move up here to this villa for the summer, just until it starts to cool off. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Come on. We're going back to town. There's work to do on the rocket. Can I help you, Uza? Yeah, hand me the blowtorch, will you? Sure. Here. Thanks. I wonder who that could be. Looks like some of the men from town. Yeah. Morning, Harry. You boys headed somewhere? Everyone's going, you heard? Going where? Up to the villa in the hills. Yeah, Harry, I'm going too. We all are. That's right, Harry. What about you? Oh, well, I've got some work to do here. Work? Well, you can finish that rocket in the autumn when it's cooler. Yeah, it's too hot to work on a thing like that now. It's nice and cool up at the villa. You know, they got fountains that are still running up there, and the paths are covered with water. It's, it's like wading in a cold stream. Keeps your feet cool all summer long. How about it, Harry? I got the frame all set up. Autumn, Harry. Autumn would be the best. Autumn would be better. It would be cooler, wouldn't it? Oh, it'd be a lot better. I'd have plenty of time then. That's right. All right, in the autumn. I'll start work then. Come on then, Harry. We got plenty of room on the truck for your stuff. Good. Hey, Harry, I got a villa near the Terra Canal. Hey, you mean the Roosevelt Canal, don't you? No, Terra, the old Martian name. Yeah, but on the map... It... Forget the map, it's Terra now. Anyway, it's in great shape, and what of you? You should see it. Maybe I will. Maybe I will. Come on, Harry, let's get your stuff on board. You got everything out of your rooms? Everything we're gonna take. I've got everything. Good, I'll come check it in a minute. Gordon, what about the front room? I don't know. The furniture looked fine in Boston, and it looked good here in the cottage, but up in the villa? Well, maybe we can get it when we come back in the autumn. Yes, in the autumn. We'll get it then. In the meantime, I've got some ideas on furniture for the villa. Big, lazy furniture. Here. Your encyclopedia. You're taking it along, aren't you? Oh, I'll come and get it next week. Well, that's it then. I've shut off the water and the gas. What about the door? There. Locked tight. All set, Harry? Yeah, we need to get going. Yeah, everything's loaded, Sam. Gosh, we're not taking much, considering all that we brought to Mars. This is only a handful. It's all we need. Harry, you drive this truck. I'll go with Wendell. Okay, everybody. Up in. Goodbye, house. Goodbye, town. It's beautiful here. I can see the whole valley. Yes. And there's our cottage down there. It's time to go back, isn't it? Yes, but we're not going, Cora. There's nothing there for us. Your books, your good clothes. Ah, the town's empty. No one's going back. There's no reason to. None at all. I guess you're right. Look down there. Such odd, such ridiculous houses the Earth people built. They didn't know any better. Such ugly people. I'm glad they're gone. Gone? <laughs> <laughs> Where did they go? I don't know. We'll go back to town maybe next year. Or the year after that. Or maybe the year after that. Maybe. Come on. Let's take a swing.
Captain Hollings. Come in, Hollings. Hollings here. Find anything? Nothing. Just more deserted houses and overgrown gardens. No one's lived here in years. Right. Keep looking. We've got to find someone. Right. Hollings out. Uh, Captain! The town's empty, but we found native life in the hills, sir. Native life? Hmm? There aren't supposed to be any natives left. Uh, dark people, yellow eyes, brown skin. They sound like Martians, all right. Well, they're very friendly. We talked a bit. They really pick up English fast. I'm, I'm amazed. I'm sure our relations will be very friendly with them, sir. How many are there? Oh, six to eight hundred, I'd say. They're living in those marble ruins in the hills. Tall, healthy men. Beautiful women. Did they tell you what happened to the colony from Earth who built this place? They didn't have the slightest idea what happened to this town or the people. Strange. Do you suppose the Martians killed them? No, they look peaceful. Chances are a plague did this town in, sir. Maybe. Well, there's lots to be done now, Lieutenant. We'll have a job of remapping to do, renaming the mountains and rivers and such. Calls for a little imagination. I think we can handle that, sir. What do you think of naming those mountains the Lincoln Mountains? And this canal here, the Washington Canal? Fine, sir. And those hills? We can name those hills for you, Lieutenant. Would you like that? Uh, yes, sir. Diplomacy, Lieutenant. And you, as a favor, might name a town for me. Polishing the old apple, eh? And that valley over there. The Einstein Valley. And those peaks. Are you listening, Lieutenant? Hmm? Oh, uh, of course, sir. Well, as I was saying, those peaks over there would be good, called the Rockefeller Peaks. Dark they were and golden-eyed was adapted from the story by Ray Bradbury. Featured in the cast were Bryce Chamberlain, Beverly Rowland, Steve Densley, Jennifer Coleman, Coleman Creel, Max Robinson, Jay Bernard, and Nathan Hale. Original music by Roger Hoffman and Greg Hansen. Production assistant was Patrick Mead. Associate producer was Jeff Rader. Bradbury 13 was created, produced, and directed by Mike McDonough. Executive producer was Dean Van Eitert. This is Paul Fries speaking. <laughs>